Good afternoon to you, Courtney. Always love having you on. I know over there at uh, Payne Capital Management, you have a bullish stance for the most part. And everybody is talking about this being the quickest recession in history. Um, when you look at the Great Recession versus today's economy and what we're seeing now, comparing it, let's say, to 2008, 2009, what are you seeing? Yeah, it's kind of fascinating because I think you're really going to see a lot of similarities between the recovery that happened in 2009 and the recovery that's happening right now. And you're going to see a lot of these doomsdayers, which is exactly what you're seeing right now. So back in 2009, for basically two years, you had people coming out and saying, nope, there's going to be a double dip recession. The economy is going to go down again. And it didn't. We were in a bull market for over 10 years, and I don't think we can discount that that can easily happen again. And a lot of similarities are kind of lining up. We have monetary and fiscal policy that are really pushing the markets higher. We have the Fed stimulus really coming in and just willing to uh, keep this market higher going forward. But realistically, there are a lot of kind of um, good fundamentals that I think are able to allow us to be bullish as we look forward here. And even if we have a negative year of GDP, it's actually not that uncommon to see that. If you look over the last 90 years, there's been 18 years where GDP was negative, and that is expected to happen again this year. But 12 of those 18 years, the markets have been higher a year later. And by on average, it's pretty strong, another 18% on average. So I think history kind of is on our side that we can continue to see this bull market go higher. I like those stats. I mean, I think that's unbelievable when you say we experienced 18 years of negative GDP growth. 66% of the time, in 12 of those 18 years, the stock market returns were positive. And in most mm -hmm. cases, well over the 18%. I, I think those stats that you provided us are really telling. So it basically screams to us, don't worry so much about these GDP prints that look terrible. So does that mean you see the rally continuing, the buying opportunities? Uh, what does that mean going forward here? We do. And I think really what's been happening and what, one of the big reasons the S&P has been doing so well is it's just a few names that have been leading that. It's your Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon and Netflix that have been leading that rally. But we're really starting to see that broaden here, which I'm really happy to see. And there are a lot of areas in the market that are still a great value right now. Like we've actually been specifically looking at adding to value over growth over the last couple of months here as it's been lagging behind. But also you're seeing your small companies have been a lot more resilient than anybody anticipated them to. And so you're seeing your small companies and your value companies still have a lot of room to grow. There's still a lot of buying opportunity in this market right now. It's interesting how you say you've been uh, loading up or picking up some some value place. You know, the whole idea here is that value was left behind growth. But the question is, if there is some sort of downturn, maybe growth sort of holds on and then value gets hit hard again. Um, it's a tough, a more, little more risky or no? Well, I think it's hard to go in assuming there's going to be a downturn. And there could be. That's obviously possible. Uh, we could see anything happen. But we're definitely on the more optimistic side. Um, I mean, some of those stats I mentioned earlier, but you have kind of further stats that really help that along. We're at 100 days that the markets have been just leading higher here. And again, when you see a big um, increase in the markets like that, after a 100-day rally, your odds are about 94% that the markets will be higher a year later if you look at history. So again, I think if you want to go into this and look at um, how things have done, there is a lot of momentum. And if we do see like a vaccine come through, for example, you can see a lot of those cyclicals or those value stocks come back to fruition here. So just as a long-term investor, you just want to look and see what is the best kind of bang for your buck right now, see what is a little bit off their highs. So definitely looking at those value names at the moment. Mm -hmm. I know you have four reasons that the, the momentum continues, a rally continues, momentum, improved fundamentals, vaccine optimism, and the yeah. skeptical investors with cash. This as we await um, to hear from the Federal Open Market Committee, those minutes, at least, mm -hmm. um, when we look at that. So tell me about these four plays here. I mean, you, you talked about policy being set up correctly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I really see there's, there's kind of four reasons here why I think the markets can continue higher. Um, momentum, like you mentioned, is a big part of that. We're seeing the, the rally is broadening out here. It's not just a couple of names. And that's a really good sign that we're starting to see everything, the whole economy kind of come back here. But the fundamentals are improving. 
we just finished up earnings seasons and companies well more than beat their expectations. And we're just seeing that companies are a lot more resilient than anyone had anticipated. And they're coming in very lean and mean. They were able to cut their costs, which is putting them in a really good position for next year. We can't forget the markets are pricing in what's happening in the next three to almost 30 months in the future. So if we're looking at how they're going to do next year, we're really seeing that start to get priced in, which is great. Um, if there's any sort of vaccine, that's kind of going to be that last catalyst I think we need to get all of those investors who are very nervous with the markets and are sitting on a ton of cash right now. We have record levels of money sitting in cash and investors aren't getting any interest by waiting. And if we start, I don't want to say if, when we start to see that money go back in, that's just going to boost the markets even higher. And eventually that money is going to have to make its way in because investors are just losing on purchasing power here in the meantime. So we're going to see that come back in. And if, the, if and when the vaccine happens, I think that could kind of be that last catalyst to see a big influx of cash go in.